unboxing never thought they would come where i would do an unboxing oh and sorry if i look dead inside i just woke up the craziest sleep it was, it was so good and now i'm awake and i find out Yuri's car this isn't even this wasn't even like the good wrapping stuff what the hell anyway I'll let you guys see first. Is there like paper on top? I can't see. Oh, but there might be. Oh wait, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, let's just go step by step. What oh, bag? Interesting. Interesting. This is obviously where you put your spikes. Is it the one where, no, it's an actual bag. Cause um, I know Nike, they give you badges. I mean, I think they all give you bags as long as you buy good enough spikes. But some of these bags, I mean, a lot of these bags, they have, they like together. So they make a, a figure eight. If you to do it from here. So if you used to look into the bag, like half of it would be like that. You fit one shoe in there and it'd be, the same on the other side i don't like that because then you can't really use the bag for anything other than spikes so, so at least um people didn't do that uh, i'm feeling it and i'm just like wow it feels like quality something i never felt before the stuff in here What's this? multi mesh Oh, just going over um, the shoe. Some paper. Some more paper. Um, my real question is, is this the right size for my foot? Because I know what size I need, which is nine. But there's a chance that it could not be. It could be not a nine. It could be... Uh, an eight or a ten or so. I, I, I tend to get unlucky like that sometimes. So let me just make sure. Oh, there's more paper. I think I lost it. It was still there. Oh, whatever. Um, there's no way to see. Seemingly, doesn't say. Um, well, I mean, I guess the easiest way to tell then is just to wear the shoe. That's like the old one. I mean, obviously, the other one is going to be the exact same. Big surprise. But, yeah. Um, these are the Tokyo Future 4s. If I'm saying that in the right way, it might be the Tokyo 4 Future. I don't remember. Um, so, yeah. Those are these shoes, and these shoes are in my hands. Very colourful, I'm going to say now. Rigid very rigid too um the top part is soft and really easy to deal with but the bottom is rigid i, I can't really bend i mean in fact to be honest it's really sporty and plasticky and then you got the spikes which makes it kind of hard to get a good grip so i can't really bend it but i really can't really bend the shoe look i'm, I'm actually trying so that means the shoe's going to be very very responsive to my feet um, what I actually wanted to do was compare this shoe to my old shoe. This this was my old shoe, which technically is my old shoe because um, it's still my current shoe. Look, look how easy it is to bend this. So you can already see the difference um, I can expect to get from wearing these instead of these. So I just thought that, that's going to be very interesting. Another thing is this has a bottom. this something you don't see often in spin shoes or at least not the normal spin shoes i get so we'll see because the way i'm looking at this right now the one like, this is even a spin shoe 
could be, could not be. We'll find out. Even if it um, isn't, it's still like high end. So this could be a middle distance bike and it'll still perform much better than this ever did. However, could. So these are most likely going to be the shoes I wear when I go sub 11. The only problem is, um, if I want to compete indoors, I can't because these spikes aren't Christmas tree spikes. And problem is, the pins are non removable, which is why I said me and this shoe are not done because this shoe, um, the spikes are removable. So I can remove the spikes and compete indoors. And if I'm competing indoors, I'm still be wearing this. But when I get to outdoors and it's time to show up, these spikes will be on my feet. I like that. Um, I might train in these for a while to, just to feel them out, see how they are. And I'll also do a comparison between the two shoes to just talk about the res responsivity and how I feel in the shoes. The most likely, I can tell, once I put these on my feet, I can be very comfortable. Something I never thought I would say about Pumas, because when I was waiting for this to come, I was like, yeah, these are probably going to be just like these, but just, well, just better. In the sense, and they were just like these, but very different somehow. And I didn't know Puma had it in them, but I'm impressed. And I can't wait to wear them and see if they go well. Mm. I'm gonna I'm gonna end this, but I'm gonna um, try them on and see if they fit my feet. Uh, hopefully they do. If they don't fit my feet, I'm gonna start this again. So that's an easy way to tell how it went. And I put on my foot. So I thought if the shoes didn't fit, I wouldn't start another recording. But I lied, because I didn't put the shoe on, and I didn't realise. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put on my old spikes. Just to just give it like a, a, a little demo of like the video. Because I'm probably going to make a whole video on just these spikes. Um, the difference between these spikes, I should say. So I'm wearing the Tokyo's right now. And never in my life have I put on spikes and it felt like shoes. Like normal shoes, because I'm wearing both of them. Ooh. There you go. I'm wearing both of them, and these feel rough and hard, and they remind me of sprint spikes. These remind me of my normal cloth shoes. Let's see if I can slide over with the spikes. There you go. Okay. So the Tokyo's, they remind me of these. You know, the bottom's hard, but everything else is nice and soft. And it just wears like a shoe. And I never, never thought I'd say that about spikes, because I always thought spikes are supposed to be uncomfortable. But I guess if you're broke, spikes were meant to be uncomfortable. And if you're rich, or if you have money, or you're willing to spend money, then spikes are quite nice to wear. And I never thought I'd say that because um, I used to always want to run in my spikes with no socks on to try and be more responsive. But I was wearing socks there and it wasn't a problem. Um, but I feel like I actually can now because I'm not sure if the, the floor is going to just dab me with every single step I take. It might. We'll see. But I just wanted to quickly say that because this is just an amazing feel. I like these shoes and I can't wait for, I believe it's March. And if it's not March, it's April to roll around so I can finally get to wear these shoes in the competition and see what happens. So now we're in present day where I have gone to training. I've tried out the shoes and I've tried them out for a few weeks now. I believe we're coming up to close 15 days. And now it's time to actually review these shoes against three other shoes before we get into the actual review of the shoes i just want to mention that there's a few different metrics i'm going to be looking at to determine how good this shoe is you've got comfortability traction cushioning flexibility and durability we're going to be going over all of those just to see how well this shoe is and how well it compares to other shoes that i've already worn first off the comfortability this shoe is very comfortable because of the the cloth cloth and mesh around the top, it's nice on the inside, whilst on the, on the outside, it's um, mobile. I can move my feet however I need to. Um, the toe box is a bit tight, but you get used to that. 
with sprint shoes you want the shoe to be as tight to your foot as possible you want to trade um closeness to your feet so i should just say tightness i guess for comfortability so that the shoe can perform as well as you want for example have you ever tried to run in shoes that are size too big for you you run in the shoes and then if your feet are like sweaty or something you slip in the shoe which means you can't sprint as fast which is obviously a very unfortunate thing to occur but you don't want that to be happening with your spikes any time other than your spikes you don't want this to happen and the fact that the shoes are made in such a way so that doesn't happen is great and it's still comfortable they've still managed to find a way to make it comfortable because if you look on the inside you can see parts like here where it's just soft and cloth whilst on the outside it's a bit more rigid and rough but it's a different story inside the shoe compare that to this one where it's very rough on the outside on the inside they put minimal effort into trying to make the shoe soft albeit i have all this for an entire season so it is a bit more comfortable than how it was when it first came it's not going to look the same naturally but if you look here instead this kind of seemed like a, a crappy pillow sort of you know and then that's just the facade because if you just delve even further into the shoe you can see there's like there's basically no effort put into your own comfort i wouldn't be surprised if i wore this for long enough i was to end up getting my foot rubbing against the side and i don't know what we call those has a problem but just have my foot shed essentially i wouldn't be surprised if that happened and that's the last of the sprint shoes because if you go to my first ever shoes these were actually mid distance shoes um these are very comfortable they're two sizes too big for me but they're very very comfortable obviously they're two sizes too big for me so i can't really talk on the how it fits when it's worn properly but the fact that it's very comfortable makes it very easy for me to run in these shoes with no problem but the comfort the comfortability um, kind of makes it hard for these shoes to be run to to run to use them well, which makes sense because they're middle distance shoes, not short sprints, short not sprint spikes. So they can trade a certain degree of tightness for comfortability, just so that you don't get destroyed. And then we move to my normal running shoes, which have a hole in them. So yeah, these shoes have been through a lot yeah, since the last time you saw them in this one video alone. But they're part of the bottom, soft on the top, and they're quite responsive. But because of the massive heel, a lot of the energy that I produce gets dissipated. So obviously I'm not going to run as fast. But when it comes to comfortability, I would say these shoes are about equal to these shoes, but they have none of the detriments. So for comfortability, if we was to give them a rating out of five, I'd give these a straight five. I've never made a shoe more comfortable than this. Then again, I don't have many shoes to compare it to. Next is traction. So the way these shoes were made was they, they are inspired by the brush spikes of the late 1900s. If you know anything about the brush spikes, then you know, I believe it was also Puma. They made the, the brush spike shoes, but they were so ahead of their time that Nike and Adidas, and I think even New Balance banded together to lobby, I think it was IAAF, to force them to ban the brush spikes until recently, I guess, to, to ban the brush spikes so they couldn't be used because people were just winning just too easily in these shoes. And the brush spike, you can see the pattern, and apologies for the dirt, it's these little tiny ridges here. These are the brush spikes and then the, you can see them throughout the rest of the shoe. I'm, I'm pretty sure the outer parts are brush spike inspired, but these parts are. And then you've got the actual spikes themselves, which aren't too different from normal spikes. But these little ridges allow you to get better grip into the track, better traction, so that you're able to sprint with less worry about falling over. Because if you've ever sprinted in normal shoes before, then you know that when you try and get into a start, it's quite often that you might be wobbling a bit or maybe you misplace your foot slight, like the smallest amount and you slightly bubble. That, that doesn't happen in the shoe. It does not happen at all. And if you look at this shoe, you can see a big difference in the spikes. The actual spikes are the exact same. I mean, the only difference here is that these spikes can be removed, these ones can't. But when you look at it in other areas, you'd see that these, it's got the the little spikes here but the design's a bit different which i'm going to show them in a bit but i just want to quickly point out that there's nothing spike related here there's there's some ridges here but there really shouldn't be because 
you don't want to ever land here at all you can walk on this but you don't want to sprint on this so this is useless but when we get to looking here it kind of looks like shark this looks like shark fins if i can get the angle on it if you see this it's basically not really any grip because if you compare it to this you can actually kind of see it slightly hook under and it's more sharper so it kind of acts as a mini spike, which is why it's like called brush spikes. But it kind of acts like a mini spike, so you have more traction. So the traction you'd be able to get from this is much less from the traction you'd be able to get from this. And then if you start going down the shoes, you're just going to see less traction. For example, for here, like, what's, what's this? What's this? You've got some little dots. What's that going to do? And then you just got these, which don't do anything, which understandable, middle distance spikes. And then you just get to normal shoes, and it's just flat. So... The tr here's where the traction really matters. If you're on the track and it's raining or it's wet, you're gonna slip in these. If you have spikes on, you're not gonna, the chances of you slipping decrease, but they have happened before. For example, I've slipped, I mean, it wasn't a track, but I have slipped on grass whilst it was wet in these shoes. Haven't tried that with these, but I doubt I'd slip in, in with these. And the chances start to go down and down and down, the more traction you get, but these shoes being the the shoe the most traction i ever had um i have nothing to compare them against but i'm still going to give them another five because i still think these are amazing next is cushioning this is important especially if you've watched my other video on where i said where i just basically debated whether you should wear shoes with or without socks socks or sockless which one's the right way to go and i said in that video mostly it didn't really matter what you pick but it does, it actually does. It depends on what type of spikes you're wearing. There are certain spikes you can get away with wearing socks and certain spikes where if you can, you shouldn't wear socks because socks will hinder your power output because you want to basically, you want to get your foot as close to the floor as possible. And socks, even though it's a small amount, they do hinder the distance from the floor, which is why if you tried to sprint barefoot, you'd realize you'd actually be able to sprint quite quickly. Yes, you might slip, but you'd actually be able to sprint quite quickly compared to how you would be able to if you just in normal shoes like this and if we go over this we've already said the this these shoes are quite comfortable they have a lot of cushioning but in exchange for that that great cushioning you sacrifice power because these soles in this shoe i'm just gonna see if i can pull it out because i'm already on wear these shoes these the soles in these shoes are really really thick and you have to factor in that thickness into the actual shoe when you're sprinting with it or trying to sprint with it because that just means you're putting force into the ground and then that force is getting dissipated slightly by the sole and then when you get to here depending on how the the, the um, plate is made there might even be more dissipation because if you actually look really carefully you can actually see a thin white layer which is which connects the two together but it's like it's like soft as well so that also dissipates some of the force and then you finally get to the the bottom part which really it's not that hard it's quite soft it's like it's like soft wood so again not much power transfer either here none basically in this basically nothing gets through this and then we move to this where you trade comfort for power which is great but if you wanted to try and sprint without socks it would hurt your feet because i've tried to do it because originally i used to sprint with no socks on and i tried to do it and your feet just get battered because there's just there's no cushioning whatsoever compare that to this shoe where it looks like there's no cushioning but there actually is and they managed to find a way to make the sole really thin i'm not going to pull out the soles in this or this because i still need these shoes but the sole in this shoe looking at it is thinner than the sole in this shoe. You can feel it, because in, in this shoe, I can actually push, let's see if I can show it clearly. I can, I can push into it quite deep, whilst in this shoe, I push and I feel the bottom of the shoe instantly. Like there's, there's no push. I push into it and I feel the bottom of it instantly. But it's still more comfortable than the other shoe because all the other factors, like the actual top of the shoe, because this part of the shoe is just like leather. It's not comfortable at all. And I really hate this shoe. I really hate wearing these shoes compared to this, where it's very comfortable and you manage to find a way to not trade um, power for comfort. And these are one of the few shoes where you could actually get away with running without any socks, without having to worry about your foot hurting. So when, again, when it comes to cushioning, I give this a number five out of five. Flexibility. 
So as I've already said, these shoes are very rigid. If you look here, it's been a while. I still can't really bend these shoes compared to this shoe where the same amount of force and like just, just crumples essentially. And you might think, okay, well, if, if that's the case, shouldn't these shoes win the flexibility contest? And yes and no, because what you actually want from the shoes is for this part to be hard, but this part to be soft and easy to move around in. You want your foot to be able to breathe and do its thing. And these shoes hinder you from doing your thing, unless your foot is literally perfect for the style of the shoe. These hinder you, and the shoes are unbelievable at all. Like your foot will sweat like crazy in these shoes. Um, I would not recommend buying these shoes unless like you just try a track, in which case your shoes really don't matter. You just need to get sprinting. But if you started sprinting for a while and you want to take this serious, I'd say, consider getting these shoes or something similar but make sure you only get them after you've been spending for like two three years so that you don't end up spending more than 100 pounds on shoes then you realize you know yeah let me hang on my spikes i'm done because that's just that's just a waste of money but when you look at these shoes the bottom is rigid like it's supposed to be rock solid still but everywhere else is soft i can crumple the shoes i can do whatever i want to it and it's fine and the fact that I can do that means, and it just scrums back to this position, obviously. And the fact that I can do that means that when I'm sprinting, I have maneuverability that I need. That's important for me so that I can actually sprint how I want to sprint without having to worry like, oh, okay, I want to move like this, but the shoe's constricting me. So I'm going to have to land like that instead. I don't want to have to be having that problem. I don't want to have a form problem with my shoes when I should be having a form problem with myself. That's the only time I should be having problems with my form. It's self-inflicted biomechanically, it's still self-inflicted due to just having poor shoes. So again, flexibility, five out of five, because what's hard is hard, what's soft is soft, like how it should be. I'm not even gonna look at the other shoes because they aren't relevant for that part. Or the next one, which is durability. Sprint shoes should be durable because you're putting into the ground anywhere from three to five times if you ever get there hopefully five times in fact you move sometimes six but no one's ever done that recorded anyway not even using but six times your body weight into the ground which means these shoes take a thorough beating thorough beating because i that's why these shoes can bend so much because i've beaten them down so much over the season which is why usually you end up getting new shoes every single season because your shoes just can't hold up because these these did used to, obviously, when I first got them, they were bendable, but they probably weren't as bendable as I'm bending them now. They're just really in a horrendous state. And that's because they're not as durable as these shoes are. Obviously, it's kind of hard to test the durability because I've had these shoes for an entire season whilst I've only had these shoes for less than a month or maybe even a month. So maybe they are, maybe they aren't durable. This one's a bit iffy. I'm still going to give this rating a five. And the reason why is... The fact that the this bottom part is so stiff makes it so that it's kind of hard for the shoe to break down because the fact that this is soft in this mesh means that the shoe can withstand a lot of pressure without having to worry. The front toe box, unlike in this shoe, which has a hole, and my other foot actually has a hole too, it's thick. If you look carefully, you can see it's just like slightly along here. Now, this is really soft and bendy, but this part, it's stiff, it's stiffer. And it's thicker actually and the reason why it's thicker is so that i can't make the make mistake i made in the other shoe and dig a hole for it so now so even though it is cloth i don't have to worry about the shoe breaking down because my foot just bore a hole straight through it so that's that's quite good because that means i didn't just waste 150 pounds after a season maybe not even a season maybe after a few months but the fact that i'm really going back to this part the fact that this is hard means that it's going to maintain its responsiveness which is obviously very important because you want the shoe to be as responsive as possible if it starts to become less responsive that means your energy your power is being leaked out of the track before it even hits the track or it's touching the track by just going off that way instead of going straight down that way to help propel you up and that's not very good something that this shoe is probably most likely currently doing so that's the rating i give this shoe a five out of five because it's just that amazing and now let's actually look at something a bit less notable but very important this is a test that you should always basically do with your shoes when you get them just to see how good the shoes are because as a sprinter your your main focus is obviously on generating as much power as possible 
which means you want to have your shoes be able to do this, which I'm about to show. So if you look at these shoes, if I put all of the pressure onto my foot, you can see my hand here, that's the, that's the table. That's how much distance there is from the floor, which means just in a natural position. If you just roll onto your foot, this is the position your foot is gonna get into. Compare that to this. And if I do the same thing here, you can see that the green shoes, damn it, the green shoes are able to get more height than my actual sprint shoes and understandable because my sprint shoes are sprint shoes while these are middle distance bikes. And then if you keep going, these shoes get even more height, marginal, but they do get more height than these shoes do. It's really hard to see, but if you look kind of carefully, you can see, because like the shoes are designed slightly differently, but if you look kind of carefully, you can see that, in fact, especially at the front, you can see that these shoes have a higher height than this shoe does. What this means is once you're in that dorsiflex position, there is no reason for you to worry about your heel touching the floor once you go to plantar flex. And it also means that your shoe is holding you in that position. But what's really important is the plantar flexion because you don't want to plantar flex your foot like, like this and then have your heel touch the floor. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna land on the floor and then your heel's gonna dip. That, that's just what happens. You land on the floor and your heel just dips. That's just how you run. If you go and look at um, all of the Olympic sprinters that you know, no allows Usain Bolt, all of them, I said no allows first because people start thinking about him more than they are Usain Bolt nowadays, I think. I'm not sure. I don't really, I don't really pay attention to that. But you'd see that if you get it from the right angle, you'd see that that's exactly what happens to everyone. Christian Coleman, Su Bing Chan, everyone. That's, that's just what happens. And if you look at this shoe, it'd be the exact same thing. You land on the floor and then your heel is going to dip. It has to. The reason why is because imagine your foot's in the shoe. Your Achilles tendon is stretching again to repel you off the ground. You were on the, you was up in the air, dorsiflexed, not, probably not that high, but he was up in the air, I mean this angle high. He was up in the air, dorsiflexed, your Achilles was stretched and you went to plantar flex the last second. You release all that energy and now your foot has to reload that and propel you back off the ground again. The lower down your heel, the easier it is for your heel to hit the ground. For example, if I do the exact same motion with this shoe, I hit the ground. And if your heel hits the ground, you have a problem because your heel hitting the ground dissipates a decent amount of your energy and your energy is already dissipating. Your muscles can return 50% roughly of the energy they produce that they absorb back into the track, whilst your tendons can do 90%, which means regardless of whether you use your muscles or your tendons, you are losing Energy, the only question is how quickly are you losing energy? Are you losing energy at a rate of 50% or are you losing energy at a rate of 10% or close to 10% or roughly around there? So the fact that these shoes are higher put just give you a bigger safety net because you have less of a worry about the problems that might occur if you plan to flex your foot, which you should do. The only thing you have to worry about is plan to flex your foot at the right time because if you plan to flex too early and your foot lands on the ground like this, well then you've got a bit of a problem because all that force your tendons were elastic potential your that was in your Achilles tendon hasn't been really used effectively and that's the unboxing of the shoe as well as me just going over how I find the shoe I really do love this shoe I love this shoe I love it I can't wait to compete in the shoe because like I said before these shoes will be the shoes that I run sub 11 in. Unfortunately, I have a feeling these will be the shoes that I go sub seven in, in the 60 meters. But I don't mind, it's fine. You know, at the end of the day, as long as I run the fast times, it's good. But I just wanna quickly wrap up the video by saying, yes, shoes are important, but they're not be your end alls. Cause whilst I was running with these shoes, there's minimal difference between this shoe and this shoe, the only real difference that is really noticeable is the comfortability. I'm no shoe expert, so obviously there are other stuff that I didn't feel, and I didn't time how quickly I was running in either shoe. So maybe if I was seeing the times, I would have said, okay, you know what, yeah, this shoe, it already wins, but I would never go back to these. So I can't really say that, which would have been great if I actually did time and see how quickly I was able to run. But I know these shoes are faster than these ones are, and that's enough for me. Uh, there's not, you won't feel much of a difference other than this comfortability when you go from lower end shoes like this to higher end shoes, 
but the main focus for me has always been on me actually running my fastest my form and i got these shoes not just to, not so i could like show off or say yeah i've got the the puma tokyos because normally wears puma actually most people go for nike or adidas but i got these just so that i could say to myself i trained hard i put in the work and i've gotten close to sub 11 and i don't want next season me to be able to use my shoes as or any external factor as an excuse for why I don't run the times I run. So I bought these shoes. I'm not saying that I'm going to put these shoes on. I'm instantly going to go sub 11. No, that, that might it might happen. It might not. But there's no way these shoes would be able to help me improve by the 0.18 seconds that I'd need to get 11 flat or 0.19 to go 10.99. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is they won't. These shoes will make sure that my shoes aren't. An external factor that when the season ends i can use as an excuse as to why i didn't run the times i wanted to run because the only excuse that i should have by the end of the season which isn't really an excuse is i just wasn't good enough and i didn't put in the work which i don't think will be the last one me not putting in the work won't be a reason but it'll just be that i'm not good enough if i fail which obviously i'm doing my absolute best this season to make sure it doesn't happen and i don't have to say i want to end this season with my 2024 recap and be able to say i did my best and I pulled it off and I did even better. And that's that's the goal. But now I'm going to finish the video and stop waffling. And yeah, see you in the next one.